Hello, Eon here. I did not intend to make a video today, but after tuning into something I wouldn't tune into on a normal basis, I just had to say something. I, I want to give my 10 cents on something. Before I make this video, or go any further, I am going to say this much. I do intend to tune in to Cartoon Network's Level Up this Monday. And unlike the past two live action shows that have appeared on its channel, I'm going to actually sit through an episode of that program and give a fair and honest review of it. And that's what I'm pretty much doing with this video that I'm about to make here. Well, at around 4 o'clock today, I was pretty much sitting down to watch TV. It was turned to Nickelodeon for some reason. And pretty much as soon as I was starting to watch, Fred Figglehorn popped up on the TV. That in, of, that in and of itself is enough to induce nightmares. But then he went on to say, I have my own Nickelodeon show! And that kind of made my jaw drop a little bit. I was like, why the hell does this exist? But then again, the better question would be, why did it take Nickelodeon until now to come out with the Fred show? Because, I mean, seriously. They've gone as far as having him make a cameo on iCarly, and he's had two television movies, so this was the obvious next step. Now, despite my... Now, despite what sorts of opinions I might have held about it beforehand, or anything like that, I did sit down and watch the entirety of this preview they had for the show. Apparently, it's not officially out yet, but it will officially be coming out fairly soon, apparently. The preview kind of played out like this. Fred's walking down the hallway with his friend. I don't know what her name is, so I'm just going to call her Fred's friend throughout the uh, review here. And then what happens is that the antagonist character of his series, Kevin, comes up, starts kind of picking on him, and then some red-haired gal named Nicolette comes in, she sort of bullies him around, and then Fred decides that he's in love with Nicolette because she was picking on Kevin. Where this leads to is pretty much Fred trying to figure out what he wants to do to impress Nicolette, or trying to figure out how to get her to date him. Well, a subplot is he needs, an exper he needs a science experiment, too. So, after having a bizarre conversation with his mother, he comes up with the uh, conclusion that he's going to make a love potion and make Nicolette fall in love with him. Well, after a couple of unsuccessful attempts, he's successful. But when he goes to the uh, science fair and decides he's going to actually try this out on Nicolette, what happens is that she ducks just as he's spraying her with the stuff, and it ends up, and he ends up spraying it on his on the bully, Kevin, and for a brief time, Kevin gets sort of a crush or some sort of weird infatuation with him. Irritated that it didn't seem to work on his love interest, Fred pretty much throws this aside, the teacher ends up picking it up, a whole bunch of crazy stuff ensues, some of this involving uh, Kevin sort of hitting on Fred for some bizarre reason, and another plot element being added in that the bully girl Nicolette was pretty much picking on Kevin because she had a secret crush on him or something like that. Well, Fred pretty much picks up on what actually happened, and he realizes that his love potion does work, but in the meantime, while all this stuff was going on with Kevin, apparently some of this love potion ended up on his teacher, or the science teacher, or whoever she was. She ended up falling in love with the skeleton. She pretty much smashed some kid's ant farm with the skeleton because she was about to make out with it. Luckily, Fred's love potion was temporary. And it, it turned out that these ants were poisonous. And from an earlier plot point in the episode was that apparently Fred's love potion not only made people fall in love with them, but 
It killed ants. So he pretty much uses the rest of the love potion to kill these poisonous ants and save the day, pretty much. And that's how the uh, episode slash preview or whatever it was ends. Now, to be absolutely honest, I'm not too thrilled about the concept of a show starring a YouTube star. But, beyond that particular element, well, I'll admit this much. Sitting through it, I felt like I was just watching a uh, higher production, higher budget, longer length YouTube video. I... I can't say that I completely hated it, but I didn't really like it either. But I'd say the reason why I disliked it would probably be due to the fact that I was never really fond of Fred's editing style in the first place. Those of you watching this that happen to be Fred Figglehorn fans, you'll probably enjoy the series because it does still follow the uh, trend of Fred's editing style. There's a lot of random things that pop up, there's cutaway jokes, Fred's chipmunk voice is still there. In other words, it's practically a Fred video, just with better effects and more writers than just Fred working on it. Better cinematography, too. Nickelodeon definitely put a higher budget in here than uh, Fred did on his typical YouTube video. So this is quite a different experience from what you'd be seeing from Fred's original YouTube videos, which would be my only personal past experience with this guy. Beyond that, judging it for the format that it is, in other words, a live-action teen sitcom, some of you are probably going to be very displeased with me for saying this, but I'm going to be absolutely honest. If it were on Disney Channel, it'd probably be faring a lot better than some of their more original stuff on there right now. It plays out a lot more interesting and entertaining than a Disney Channel live-action teen sitcom show. As for the Nickelodeon shows it's probably going to be competing against or sort of rivaling with, it's going to have some difficulty holding its own against stuff like Victorious or iCarly. I don't say this just because iCarly and Victorious have two um, teen icons that a bunch of preteen girls look up to. It's just, personally, I think that Victorious and iCarly have better writers than The Fred Show does. In other words, iCarly isn't dependent on relying on an editing style that was made before the show even came out. In other words, iCarly isn't the only part that the show is entirely based off of. What makes the show entertaining are the crazy things that the iCarly crew ends up doing outside of the web show. I have sat down and watched a couple of the uh, more recent specials, or rather the sequel to the uh, iPsycho episode. I enjoyed that quite a bit. The writing's getting better than what it was. They've definitely rebounded from the uh, SETI episodes, anyway. And... I'm definitely being honest when I'm saying that the writers for iCarly are definitely a, a lot better than the ones for Fred. The only things I really didn't like about this uh, preview for Fred were, yeah, just the fact that it was attributing to his random editing style. I'll give them some credit to that, considering what source material they had to work with, but at the same time, it's really a hindrance to the show, too. Because... While I was watching this, there were a couple of things that I did enjoy about it. Now, the beginning was pretty irritating. I could care less for Fred doing what top-tier YouTubers do. In other words, the jump cut stuff. But if you can get past that... Okay, I'm just going to say the two things that I actually did enjoy about the episode. I liked how they introduced the love interest. I liked the uh, spin that the show took with that. And I also enjoyed where they went with the uh, love potion um, plot point. What I really liked about the love interest aspect is that from a lot of the live-action teen sitcoms I've watched, when you introduce a love interest, they're typically perfect, perky, the... Uh, 
epitome of teen superficial perfection. In other words, they're pretty, they're nice, they're practically a cookie cutter type stereotype. Of course, sometimes you have the ones that turn out to be mean or not so perfect or their flaws are that they're clumsy or something like that. And with love interests that you'd introduce for uh, teen sitcoms that weren't girls, you pretty much have the bad boy and, oh, he's so bad and so cool and stuff like that. What I'm saying is, when a love interest is initially introduced, they come across as being absolutely perfect. What I really liked about how this show introduced a love interest is that she's kind of, she's not exactly uh, pretty or girly in the ways that most live-action teen sitcom love interests are. She was kind of burly, she was mean, she was a bully, yet Red ended up falling for her anyway. I, I liked that. It was an interesting approach. And, yeah, I'm pretty much saying I like that approach because it's different from what most shows like that really go for. Moving beyond that, what I liked about their approach to the uh, love potion theme was that they approached it in the way that a cartoon would. Fred had uh, several different ways that he tried it out. The first time he tried it, he tried it on a delivery guy, and then he ended up being chased by dogs. And then he tried it out on his best friend, and I think that made her sick. And then the next thing, he found out that it was uh, an ant killer, and then it ended up working. The first person he tried it out on was his elderly next-door neighbor. Her reaction was a bit creepy, if I can say so. But then again, when I say it plays out how a love potion type of thing would play out in a cartoon, I'm being fairly serious about that. I found, I found it kind of funny. It looked like it could have some real comedic potential. And that really played out when Fred accidentally sprayed it on the bully Kevin. But when it led to the teacher being sprayed with it and making out with the skeleton, that was a bit unnerving. That really kind of freaked me out. They didn't necessarily show her full-on making out with the skeleton, but it was still kind of freaky to some extent. It really kind of bothered me. But that's really nitpicking right there. I guess what I'm saying as a whole is I didn't really love this show, but at the same time, I didn't really hate it either. When the actual show comes on, I'm probably not going to tune into it because, as I said, exactly the selling points that you have bringing the show on the air, such as uh, Fred, Fred's editing style still being intact, those sorts of things, that's practically what hinders it at the same time. You have some pretty clever writers working on it, possibly some of the same ones that are working on iCarly, but they're really held back by how random and spontaneous the show seems to have to play out. I can appreciate that to some extent. It's just... This is just a higher-budget Fred YouTube video that you're watching on television. I don't know. Maybe if it were somebody other than me watching this, somebody that's a Fred fan, or even not a Fred fan, would probably like it a bit better, but that's my uh, overall opinion on this. I'm sorry I'm not shredding into this like you'd expect I would be, but as I said, I wanted to give it a fair shake, and that's as fair as I'm going to get. I still think it's absolutely ridiculous that this exists, but it's not a completely terrible show. I'd rather see a cartoon in its place. It's practically just a live-action cartoon, which might also attribute to why I don't really like it as much as I could, but I digress. Let's just hope that this doesn't lead to a YouTuber like Shane Dawson or somebody getting their own show on television or Nickelodeon, for that matter. I'm going to end it on this. I don't like the fact that this show exists, 
but it's not an entirely bad show. It's okay for what it is. This is Eon, signing off. Bye.